What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we're in the brand new 2022 Volkswagen Jetta courtesy of Hanover Volkswagen and Hanover PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so Volkswagen Jetta was actually, it is a legend. It was first introduced back in 1979 at the Frankfurt Auto Show and it is still around today. How many vehicles can say that at this point of time there are not many out there but anyways there are actually a few nice changes for the 2022 jetta as well so ultimately in this video i will be going over those changes as well as everything else including exterior interior acceleration exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2022 jetta including a new trim level as well s trim is going to start at twenty thousand three hundred and sixty five dollars sport trim level which is the new one for 2022 starting at twenty one thousand two hundred and sixty five dollars se which is the one we have today starting at twenty four thousand ninety five dollars and lastly the sel starting at twenty eight thousand ninety five dollars but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the new jetta is going to be the same powering the beast is a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 158 horsepower at 5500 rpm 184 pound feet of torque coming in at approximately 1700 rpm power sent to the front wheels through your choice of either a six speed manual or an eight speed automatic the eight speed automatic actually adds 800 dollars if you wanted to go that route zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 7.6 seconds so we'll be testing that out here in a little bit mpg numbers coming in at 29 in the city 43 on the highway for the manual and then 31 in the city 41 on the highway for the automatic taking regular unleaded fuel but so then before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our new jetta i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes of course you have the normal driving mode which is what the jetta naturally defaults to but there is also an eco driving mode that button's located just to the left of the shifter essentially adjusting things like the shift points and the throttle response so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put this thing here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2022 jetta here up to speed all right you guys here we go huh yeah that'll definitely work there wasn't any turbo lag either that's why i said huh because usually there is so with the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine i kind of expected it but it wasn't there this was a decent pull for the Volkswagen Jetta, quite honestly, you're not gonna have any issues in merging onto the highway. So, actually, pleasantly surprised. So, anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so, up front, you will find 11.3 inch ventilated front discs, in the back, 10.7 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that is going to come in at 127 feet. So, eh. It's not the best number, quite honestly. Typically, you want to be in the lower 120s, if not the 1 teens, but 127 is definitely on the higher end of things. But having said that, the braking feel isn't bad. It's just it's not the best looking number out there. I'll just put it that way. But anyways, touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, torsen beam rear axle, front stabilizer bar. And if you were to go at that sport trim level, you actually are going to get an XDS cross differential system, which essentially just helps improve traction and handling ultimately but as far as ride quality goes we are riding on some very smooth roads right now <laughs> but it's feeling perfectly fine quite honestly definitely not going to have any issues there i've certainly felt a heck of a lot worse so ride quality has been perfectly fine as far as steering feel goes it's a little bit on the looser side of things wouldn't have minded if they firmed up that steering feel or made it a bit heavier of a steering feel but it'll get the job done so no issues there touching on cabin noise we are going 43 44 miles per hour right now and there's a little bit of wind noise but quite honestly it's not that bad so definitely no issues with cabin noise either and then touching on visibility you are definitely not going to have any issues with visibility it's excellent visibility as you would expect from a vehicle like the jetta i did want to also mention though rain sensing windshield wipers are going to come on the se and sel trim levels if you were interested but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 
Volkswagen Jetta. All right, you guys, here she is, the new 2022 Volkswagen Jetta finished in deep black pearl. In case anybody was curious of our exact color name, let's go ahead and start up front on this one because there is a slightly revised front fascia for 2022, ever so slightly, nothing major there, but LED headlights actually do come standard on every single trim level across the board, so you gotta love that. They will, of course, come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard on all trim levels if you were to go with the sel trim though you will get led projector headlights so a little better illumination at night if you were to go with that specific trim and for that front grille it will be a completely blacked out front grille if you go with the sport trim level but that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the jetta all right so now since we are around to the side of this one love the water in the background there but anyways chrome belt line molding does come standard on all trim levels but the sport black window surrounds of course coming with that sport trim level you guys are going to find that's going to be the common theme everything with the sport is going to be finished in black essentially scl badging on the front fender coming only with the scl trim level because all the other trim you're going to get no little accent on the front fender with the trim level badging so didn't want to emphasize that taking a look at the side mirrors they are body color power adjustable side mirrors that will come standard you will get black mirror caps with the sport trim level of course and they will be heated for every single trim level so that is pretty cool taking a look down at the wheel setup they will differ substantially amongst the trims of course 16 inch two-toned alloys coming with the s 17 inch 10 spoke alloys coming with the sport and then 17 inch aluminum alloys coming Coming with the SE and SEL trims, which of course is what you guys are looking at right now, but that pretty much rounds out the side profile here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the Jetta. All right, so now since we are around to the back, body colored shark fin antenna found all the way to the top, just below that, LED tail lights coming standard on every single trim level across the board. Of course, you will find some trim level badging found in that rear trunk in case you were curious what trim level you were looking at at any given time. There is going to be some chrome trim available on that rear bumper coming with the SEL trim level. Otherwise, you're gonna get some black accents like we currently have here today. And then just underneath of it all, tucked away, you will find a single exhaust outlet. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Alright, so now since we are around to the back of the Jetta, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button to unlock it on the key fob. There is also a button to pop it on the driver's side door and actually on the trunk itself, of course. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there are some levers found in that cargo area. Simply just pull them. There is a 60-40 split, meaning those rear seats will fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There is some cargo lighting back there, and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo cargo floor, you will find a spare tire as opposed to the fix a flat. But then make our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 37.4 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. I will say there is no rear ventilation. There's no charging ports, but there is a rear center armrest with cup holders, which is pretty cool. So was definitely a fan of that. And if you were to go with that SEL trim level, you will get heated rear seats, which is very rare to find. So that is pretty cool that that is available as well. But then making our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the S, sport seats, of course, coming with the sport trim level. Essentially what that means is you get some enhanced bolstering and some contrast stitching with that trim. SE trim then is going to add six-way power driver seat with power lumbar. That's of course what we have today. Heated front seats and leatherette seating as well well then the sel trim is going to add ventilated front seats then in addition to that but overall seating was plenty comfortable honestly when you get to the power lumbar you pretty much are going to find your perfect driving position more or less then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it does come with a flat bottom which i personally love it will come leather wrapped for the se and sel trim levels and then heated for the sel trim level only then make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you do have your volkswagen logo on the one side then when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and that button to unlock the rear trunk. But essentially, it is all keyless entry with the push button start if 
you go with the SE or SEL trims. That's how you're going to go ahead and get that. So essentially all I'm going to do here is just simply pump my front of the brake and press that silver engine start button located just to the left of the shifter. And now here's where it really gets good in another change from previous years. Full digital gauge cluster is going to come standard on every single trim level, just like the new Volkswagen Taos as well, which is pretty cool. So I do like that. There is a large digital speedometer front and center. It gives you how many miles you have left until you hit empty, outside temperature, basically everything you could possibly need up there. And there are some steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there to adjust what you want to display. Then take a look at overall interior quality. Panoramic sunroof is going to come with the SEL trim level only. Dual zoom climate control coming with the SE and SEL trim. So both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures there. Wireless phone charger is going to come with the the SEL trim level only. And there is an available frameless rear view mirror with home light controls for up to three different garage doors. And that mirror actually comes with a compass in the upper right hand corner too, which I thought was pretty cool. Another cool thing about the overall interior quality in general is that everything is kind of tilted towards the driver, like let's say a Nissan GTR likes to do. So it makes it very driver centric, which I think is pretty cool. Just in front of the shifter, you have some rubberized storage since we have the SE trim. Otherwise that would be a wireless phone charger. Two phone charging ports, there's a 12 volt power outlet electromechanical parking brake to the left of the shifter. You do have a little bit of storage for your cell phone, dual cup holders, and within the center armrest, there's actually a decent amount of storage in there. And I like how it's a contrast color as opposed to everything else that we have today too. So I don't know, it's kind of a little pop of color there, but overall, interior quality is kind of on the basic side. You do have a lot of hard plastics like right around the shifter and on the doors as well, but overall it'll certainly get the job done. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen, 6.5 inch color touchscreen display coming with the S, the Sport and the SE. However, if you go with that SEL trim, you're gonna get an eight inch color touchscreen display Either way though, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming, you still get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay even with the 6.5 inch screen. Fuel prices, stock information, there's a bunch of stuff you can check out actually. Radio information as well. And by the way, four speakers are going to come with the S, Sport and SE trims. However, you will get a Beats sound system with the SEL and that is not the one we have today unfortunately. So we do have the four speaker sound system. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today and Let's test out the clarity of this one. Okay, amount of bass, not the best clarity. I guess we were on FM radio, so it's not like it was like a Sirius XM or anything like that, but still, clarity, eh. It's okay. I mean, it's a four speaker sound system. I don't know how else to say it. Four speakers, even in the size of this vehicle, I think is not quite enough. You need at least a six speaker sound system. Eight speakers would be ideal, if not better. So. Beat sound system is definitely where it's at if you're into music at all. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put this thing in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking, front assist with pedestrian monitoring then as well, and then if you were to go with the SE trim level and up, you're also going to get travel assist, lane keep assist, emergency assist, and adaptive cruise control as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the 2022 Jetta, I love the newly standard digital gauge cluster, just like the Volkswagen Taos. It looks dang good. And so many manufacturers are still not putting digital gauge clusters in their vehicles. And it's one of the things that gets to me because there's so much cooler, there's so much more customization available with the digital gauge cluster. But anyways, the fact that a manual transmission as well is still available on the Jetta is an absolutely wonderful wonderful thing definitely appeals to the enthusiasts out there and you get 43 miles per gallon on the highway with that so that's pretty cool too speaking of excellent fuel economy especially the size of the vehicle to get over 40 miles per gallon on both transmission options is definitely a wonderful thing pretty good ride quality like i was mentioning as far as room for improvement goes you got some bland styling and that four speaker sound system is definitely not where it's at but anyways let me know what you guys think of the new jetta in the comment section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all 
do appreciate you guys watching more than you know what. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.